MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Advanced Sports Labs. Expedite your blood work today at advancedsportslabs.com. Welcome to MMA Inside the Cage, bringing the world of mixed martial arts straight to you. I'm your host, Cyrus Fees. Next to me, he's a shoe in for this year's presidential election. I'm talking about Casey Oxenreiter. When you cast your vote this time, forget about Mitt Romney and, and Ron Paul. Cast your vote for Casey Oxendine for my vice presidential candidate. I want nothing to do with this. this. I want nothing to do with this. That was a horrible Bill Clinton. That was garbage, bro. It wasn't that bad, man. You know, Jan's been kind of coaching me and and helped me with it. So I thought, you know, for this episode, I'd be able to kick that one out. Okay, that was trash. Okay. This week, we took a full preview of Cage Brawl number eight that goes down Friday, January 27th at the Meadowview Convention Center in Kingsport, Tennessee. Talk about a big event, great card. Casey. Oh man, you know the first uh, pro event ever to hit King Sport. Uh, you know, uh, headlined by Glenn Cook, Daniel Crockett. Tyler Minton and Josh Boer. This is going to be a great show. Of course, uh, a great undercard, but uh, you know the big deal is, uh, is the program. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. We're also going to talk about the Valley Fight League show that went down in West Virginia. Mm-hmm. West Virginia's first MMA event. There was a big guest there, Dan the Beast Severn, and we have an interview with him as well. We certainly do. That guy is a class act. Our second Hall of Famer That's for an exclusive amazing. interview. Man, I'm so excited to get this thing on air. It's going to be great. Now, before we get into Cage Brawl and Dan Severn, I want to talk about the big news of this week. Week, and that, of course, is Chris Cyborg Santos, mm-hmm. the Strike Force 145 pound champion, testing positive for a performance enhancing drug. The drug is Winstraw. It's an over the counter drug in most countries, but it is an anabolic steroid. Now, Casey, you've been in the business for a while, you've been a trainer, you've been all this. What exactly is Winstraw? What are the effects? Well, I mean, it's no surprise that uh, athletes across the world have been using this uh, drug for many, many years. Uh, It it is anabolic. Uh, You know, typically speaking, uh, it is one of those agents that helps you to uh, maintain your cardiovascular. You know, it's not a bodybuilding drug, uh, but it is a performance-enhancing drug, no no less. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it is, uh, you know, illegal in uh, the United States and in in the UFC and mixed martial arts. And uh, it's just very unfortunate that she got popped with it because uh, it's going to change the face of women's mixed martial arts. This is true. Well, Dana White wasted no time in stripping Cyborg of the title, and now he's saying that the whole 145-pound division, which pretty much consisted of Cyborg, uh, is going to be out. Now, uh, how far does this set back the sport of MMA for women? Well, you know, uh, one might say that, that it, you know, it's a, it's a stake in the heart, but uh, for me, I mean, you know, You've got Ronda Rousey, you've got Misha Tate, you've got Gina Carano still lulling around. You know, Dana White said he would take her back in, in a New York minute. Of course. So, uh, you know, it, it definitely, uh, women's MMA is definitely still on the rise. Sure. And so, uh, you know, I have faith in it. Okay, not to mention, you know, Invicta Fighting Championship is oh, on yeah. the horizon, and that's another one that could make some really big waves, Janet Martin. Oh, absolutely, man. Now, of course, Janet was in talks with uh, Marlis Coonan mm-hmm. and uh, had her signed before, uh, you know, so uh, you might see that. And hey, you might even see that free agent in, uh, in, uh, Cyborg Santos uh, come aboard for Victor. Could you imagine how big of a splash that would make big if she picked stuff. up Cyborg? Well, I'll tell you what, that's big news, and we got some big stuff going on this episode. We're going to get into the Valley Fight League show, where your guy had a very good showing, Nate yeah. Jolly. We also got the interview with Dan the Beast Severn. We're also going to talk about Cage Run number 8 that goes down Friday, January 27th in Kingsport, Tennessee. But right now, let's get to it. It's your MMA Inside the Cage Punch of the Week. As a professional fighter, there's a lot of things that I need to be concerned about. I need to be concerned about my opponent. I need to worry about my fans. I don't want to have to be concerned about my blood work. That's why I go to Advanced Sports Labs, and I get my blood work done in an affordable manner. They get it done fast. They send it to the commission, they send it to the promoter, and they send it to me, so I have peace of mind knowing that everything's done properly. As a promoter, they've taken away the headache of trying to get the blood work and get the results to the state. Uh, they have streamlined the process, and they do it at a great affordable rate for the fighter and for the promotion. Expedite your blood work today at advancedsportslabs.com. Are you ready, America? Then let's get it on with Fight Now TV. Your front row seat, seven days a week to experience all the hard-hitting action, news, and entertainment from around the fight world. From world-class boxing events. Here we go, the main event. To mixed martial arts showdowns and other combat sports matchups. Here we go. Fight Now TV delivers the hits and more. 
Fight Now TV also offers unrivaled access to the fighters and insiders who make the fight game happen around the globe. As we go from the training camps to the weigh-ins, press conferences to the matchups, Fight Now TV is there before and after every bell. Fight Now TV also features original series found only on Fight Now. There you have it. Stop on by. It's time, fight fans. Your channel has arrived. All the fights, all the names, all the action. Call your television provider and tell them you want to get it on with Fight Now TV. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Advanced Sports Lab. Welcome back to MMA Inside the Cage. Second round action, Cyrus Fees alongside Casey Oxnine. Of course, we'll be previewing Cage Brawl 8 that's going down Friday, January 27th in Kingsport, Tennessee. we got a full preview coming up next round, but right now we want to talk about the first MMA event that went down in West Virginia. You were there, Valley Fight League, the beginning. Lionel Royer was uh, there putting that on. Butch Hiles, uh, who has Butch Hiles MMA, and it was a great event, a lot of big fights. Casey, you had one of your guys out there, Ladies Love Nate Jolly, um, and he got back on the winning track. Talk about that fight a little bit. Well, man, uh, you know, he faced Adam Mays, who is a very, very tough guy. Uh, you know, uh, they had billed him as the, the best fighter you've never heard of, you know, uh, and he did it, man. He uh, he lasted three rounds with Nate. Nate picked up the, the unanimous decision. We were happy to get him back on the winning track. He looked fantastic, and uh, we're ready for big and be you know, bigger and better things. Let's talk about the event, uh, Valley Fight League. You know, they went out there, went out on a limb, and did the first event in West Virginia. How did it all go, and uh, how did everything come through? Well, this is it. Uh, you know, I spoke with uh, Butch Hiles and Lionel uh, both, and they were uh, they were so adamant about how difficult it was to put it together. You know, sure. because this is the first one. So uh, you know, there were a lot of uh, rules put in place. Uh, one, they had to have all of the the huge screens. They had to have a uh, you know at least fifteen hundred capacity. Uh, you know, to get this thing off the ground, the the state required it. And uh, I think what they're wanting is uh, you know they're making this transition from box and tough man uh, into MMA they want to see MMA succeed on a grand scale so they're not going to allow you to put on uh, you know halfway level shows sure. you know, these, these are going to be very very good quality events and uh, I think there's going to be a lot going on uh, in the future for West Virginia uh, as far as the card it was an all pro event there they uh, this is another stipulation that West Virginia said is that there would be no amateur fight um, it, it would be all pro uh, and, and it was exciting you know we got to see the return of Adam Sepulveda uh, Greg Maynard a, a, a Bellator vet uh, show back up there and of course uh, former King of the Cage champion Billy A. Ash was on hand. Wow that's fantastic now some VIPs were in the house for that yet yeah, mm -hmm. Dustin Hazlitt was mm -hmm. there that was a big move George Gergel was mm -hmm. there from Strike Force, and then of course there was one VIP that yeah. you had to get the interview from and that is Dan the Beast Severn talk about that interview it's pretty fantastic yeah the Beast was there man he was uh, just a, a gentleman uh, you know all around nice guy is what he said and uh, you know it, it was it was a lot of fun man I, you know I was I was shaking like a leaf before I went in there man because he's a he's a guy I've been watching since the very start come on man you've got Shamrock now Randall when you were shaking that's for two, that's seven. two Hall of Famers man and uh, I just uh, let's take a look at it right now we don't have a second fight for you but let's go ahead and give you a taste of what you can see on this Dan Severn interview which we're gonna have the full version available on our YouTube page here it is this is MMA inside the cage all right, Casey Oxendine with MMA Inside the Cage right here with a Hall of Famer. We're talking a UFC Hall of Famer, also Arizona State Wrestling Hall of Famer and a former world champion. How are you doing today, Dan? Doing good there, Casey. And yourself? Absolutely. Well, I'm doing great. Uh, it's great to be able to sit here and pick your brain a little bit. Uh, you know, I want to go back uh, to the very first UFC, uh, what I call the golden years. And uh, during that time, uh, there were a very, very... Uh, um, colorful group of guys you know uh you know hoist gracie he was the 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 jujitsu guy in the gi you know you had ken shamrock who was the shoot fighter you had the pit fighter in tank abbott the russian oleg tektarv and then you had the greco all-american it was dan severin so uh what i'd like to do is is uh kind of find out what was in your head way back then uh you know when you're about to step into the cage the first time in 1994 with anthony macias um you know uh no gloves hardly any rules uh what was it like I guess maybe to educate some of the viewers right now, from what uh, what they're watching on television today, mixed martial arts, it has approximately 37 rules. Part of those 37 rules are weight classes, there are time periods, and they face one opponent in a given evening. Back when it first began, it was known as the no holds barred era. No holds barred era, you had two rules that you had to abide by. Those rules being do not bite your opponent, do not stick your fingers in their eye sockets. End of the rules. Anything that you could possibly think of, you were good to go and let uh, let your imagination go wild as to what 
that all means. Now, uh, Ken Shamrock was very adamant that he actually felt that uh, performing, performance enhancing drugs, uh, steroids, should be allowed in, in professional sports as long as uh, monitored by a physician. Uh, so what I'd like to do is, is get your take on the PEDs and the situation. A lot of, time, a lot of people bring up a lot of uh, questions about Ken and myself. You know, we, we had a few matches, and, and it was actually the Ultimate Fighting Championship that probably uh, brought thought that, that, that there was like just this ongoing feud. I mean, honestly, I really don't even know Ken. I've never had this type of one-on-one -on -one type of a conversation with him be before. Whatever time we spent was inside of a, uh, a cage, and you weren't exactly ex exchanging pleasantries at the time. How was the wife and kids? Oh, pretty good. No, how's not? Nah. Nope. So, um, I think that's one of the reasons why I would like to have uh, one more match, maybe with with the Hoist, uh, a Mark Coleman, and a Ken Sh uh, Shamrock. Uh, I have. Very few losses, but when you look at the time era when most of my losses occurred, it was prior to the drug testing. Mm -hmm. I I credit myself uh, a great deal that all of my all of my success that I've had, I've achieved on my own ability. I did not have to take a pill. I did not have to take a shot. I know that I'm a true champion and in uh, so many different ways. As I said, I, I wouldn't mind doing a couple a couple more matches, one more with, with uh, Ken Shamrock only because I think it's marketable in the sense that he won a match, I won a match. Let's do the old rubber match here right now. You know, and, and I have no problem being tested. Uh, the only sauce you'll ever find on me, you might find a little spaghetti sauce over here or something like that up in the stash, but that will be about the only kind of sauce you'll, you'll, you'll find ever in, in, in my system. Uh, and I would actually like to, you know, just sh do that one last hurrah there with him. No axe to the grind with anybody else, as I say, stated earlier. Um, I started off really strong in the sport. I've had a very long uh, career with it. I just want to finish it off in a strong fashion and then more or less be done with that phase of life and move on to the next phase. As a professional fighter, there's a lot of things that I need to be concerned about. I need to be concerned about my opponent. I need to worry about my fans. I don't want to have to be concerned about my blood work. That's why I go to Advanced Sports Labs, and I get my blood work done in an affordable manner. They get it done fast. They send it to the commission, they send it to the promoter, and they send it to me, so I have peace of mind knowing that everything's done properly. As a promoter, they've taken away the headache of trying to get the blood work and get the results to the state. Uh, they have streamlined the process, and they do it at a great, affordable rate for the fighter and for the promotion. Expedite your blood work today at advancedsportslabs.com. Are you ready, America? Then let's get it on with Fight Now TV. Your front row seat, seven days a week to experience all the hard-hitting action, news, and entertainment from around the fight world. From world-class boxing events. Here we go, the main event. To mixed martial arts showdowns and other combat sports matchups. Here we go. Fight Now TV delivers the hits and more. Fight Now TV also offers unrivaled access to the fighters and insiders who make the fight game happen around the globe. As we go from the training camps to the weigh-ins, press conferences to the matchups, Fight Now TV is there before and after every bell. Fight Now TV also features original series found only on Fight Now. There you have it. Stop on by. It's time, fight fan. Your channel has arrived. All the fights, all the names, all the action. Call your television provider and tell them you want to get it on with Fight Now TV. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Advanced Sports Labs. Welcome back. It's third round action, and we're previewing the big Cage Brawl 8 card on Friday, January 27th from the Metaview Convention Center in Kingsport. Let's talk about Cage Brawl 8, Casey. This is a big time event for the city of Kingsport. I mean, Bristol had their pro event. Johnson City's had theirs. You put that one on, and uh, this is a big deal for the city. Yeah, you know, uh, everybody's coming together for this uh, to, to push the pro events. You know, it, it's everyone's responsibility to, to get together, uh, make sure that the tickets get sold because it's not cheap. You know, the sure. uh, Cage Brawl's really going out on a limb uh, to promote this event, and uh, I think it's going to be fantastic. Well, I mean, just that they've been around so long, that has to speak to something. I mean, eight of their Cage Brawl shows, plus the one they did in Appalachia, that's nine events. That's pretty impressive for any MMA company to be around that long. 
Yeah, it's not easy, man. And, and, and knowing from personal experience, uh, every time you promote an event, you go out on a limb. When you start adding pro sanctioning, pro insurance, it, you know, it, it adds so much to it. Uh, and so uh, I'm very, very happy to see uh, pro fighting, uh, you know, here in Kingsport. Sure. Now we know about all these big fights. I'm going to show you the card right here. It's up on the screen. Uh, big time loaded card here. As far as the pros, you're looking at your guy main event, and uh, that's Tyler Minton against Amici Asalukwe. I know how to say his name. Mm -hmm. I've announced him a couple AKA times. AKA the Notorious AO. That's, that's going to be a good fight. You got Daniel Crockett, Shane Machete. That's going to be good. Len Cook, Brandon McMahon. That's going to be yeah. another one. And then Josh Brewer and Jay Menagello. Yeah. Talk about these fights. What, what fight is like sticking out to you? Of course, you know Tyler's is because you're his coach. Sure. But what what fight's really sticking out to you? To be maybe the sleeper fight, the one that just takes it all. Well, Lynn Cook McMahon is, is going to be better than what a lot of people think. Uh, you know, Lynn is definitely the favorite in that fight. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, McMahon is a very scrappy, tough dude. And uh, the word is is that he really wants this fight. He he's taking it very seriously. He's come to fight. I think it's going to be a fantastic performance by both guys. Uh, but you know, the, the Manigello Josh Boer fight is think, another yes. one, man. Josh Boer is an incredible athlete. Once again, he is picked to win this fight. But uh, Manigello has proven time and time again that he has staying power. You know, he's a tough, strong guy, and he's beaten some really good guys, guys that he shouldn't beat. So that's another one that, that I'm very excited about. Well, no, and with this fight, you know, you got kind of the XFC looming here in just yeah. like a month or so, and you're talking about Len Cook going against Chris Wright, so right. he has to get ready for that. And then, of course, you got Tyler Minton taking on Shane Machete, which right. he's going to be able to see him firsthand and see what he's all right. about and see what kind of shape he's in. Um, do you think that's going to be a problem, these guys getting ready for those fights coming up, maybe getting too excited about that, maybe overlooking their opponents? Well, you know, we were just talking about that, and it is very important that you look directly ahead of you. You know, if, you, if you're on a 100-mile trip, you know, you've got still got to look 40 feet ahead of you because that's all the road that you have in front, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can't go, uh, you know, thinking about the XFC or anything like that. You've got to see what's in front of you and, and take that... Uh, take that challenge as it comes and I think that's what these guys are gonna do they're all professionals and I think that they're gonna go into a cage brawl and they're gonna you know put their all heart and soul into it sure I think it's gonna be great and of course you do have some great stuff on the undercard as well of course Adam Townsend will be there Dustin Long and then D'Angelo Bynum is gonna be making his return to cage brawl as well gonna be a fantastic card it is Friday January 27th from the Meadowview Convention Center in Kingsport Tennessee go get your tickets right now at cagebrawlfights.com get signed up for that get your VIP tables I feel, think they have a few of those left Oh, yeah. uh, you don't want to miss out on this great event. Right now, let's go to it. It's a cage brawl style MMA inside the cage main event of the week. But uh, Bodie Price is definitely uh, on the winning on the winning road right now. Oh, so yeah. this could be that, that makes for a very very interesting fight. Whoa! Big shot! Big, shot, big, big shot right by, hand by Shelton. That's what I'm saying. The kid has a very well rounded game. He can do it all. Trying to run the clincher, Travis Shelton. And, and, and Bodie doing exactly what he needs to do. He needs to close the distance. Whoa! Whoa. Big shot Big by Price. Bodie Price. Wow. These boys have come to bang at cage ball. Both have taken two very hard punches. It's staggered. Both of them have been staggered at least once in this fight. And we are just in the first Big minute. Shot. Wow. Big kick. I don't know how well that kick landed from this vantage point, but these guys are definitely throwing the down. There. Bodie doesn't look in good shape. No. But every time I say that, it's like he hears me. Oh, that's not a good place to be uh -uh. for Bodie Price. He has been very resilient so far oh, in this fight. Oh, my goodness. Big, Whoa, baby. Head. But Shelton completes the takedown. Wow. Both guys big very shot. durable. That connected right there, that kick from Bodie Price. And I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Bodie. I, I, you know, I, I think it's kind of up in the air right now. It depends how this one finishes off. Very nice move by Bodie Price. Well, and he Bodie got slipping back, onto the Casey. back. Now that is, that was a good move with his hips there. A lot of guys lose that back position. Oh my goodness. Bodie's working upset. that rear naked choke. He's got the body triangle on. But even that being said, he needs to start raining down punches. He needs to start raining down punches if he wants to get a stoppage. Travis Shelton's hurt. Wow. If, Bode, if he keeps coming, oh. My Bodie God. Price with another and the upset. fight is over. That is, that this was an unbelievable fight about. right there. Team Extreme is 2-0, and oh, Casey. And Case Brawl number seven and Bodie Price. What another upset with it. MMA Inside the Cage, Cyrus Fees, and we're talking to Len Cook, who's going to be facing Brandon McMahon at Cage Brawl 8, Friday, January 27th at the Meadowview Convention Center in Kingsport, Tennessee. Len, it's great to have you back here on the show, and uh, I know you're very excited about this fight, your second pro fight, and uh, talk about your opponent, Brandon McMahon, and what he's going to offer you in the cage. 
Uh, I know he trains out in Knoxville. He's a very well-rounded fighter, real tough, and from what I hear, he's real hungry. He's been training hard. He's been scouting me for a while. Apparently, he's wanted this fight for a long time. So I'm looking forward to it, somebody who really wants to bring it to me and challenge me. So I'm, I'm excited. Now, you were in his shoes not too long ago making a, a pro debut, and uh, you had to be so hungry when you made that pro debut to make that next step. Um, do you feel like that's going to be something to worry about, you know, with him coming out trying to, you know, get that first pro win? Well, I don't think so because when I did my pro debut, it didn't feel any different. I mean, yeah. it, it was taking the next step up, but it still felt like a fight. I mean, this is something I enjoy doing. I love doing it, and I want to progress in the sport. But bottom line is this is something I want to do, so it didn't really feel very much different. I'm here with Tyler Maley Minton, who will be facing Amici Asalukwe at Cage Brawl number eight. Welcome back to the show. What's this, like seven or eight times you've been on the show? Several times, yeah. <laughs> kind of have your home here on MMA Inside the Cage. You're facing the infamous AO. This is a fight that was supposed to happen for a long time now, and finally you're going to get your hands on him and uh, talk about this fight and talk about your opponent. Uh, I'm just real excited to finally get to fight the guy. Um, I was supposed to fight him two times before. Things happened. We weren't able to fight. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm just really excited to finally get this one out of the way. Uh, move on to the next opponent and don't have to worry about this one anymore. So it'll be real exciting. I'm here with Josh Boer, who's going to face Jay Menagello at Cage Brawl 8, January 27th at the Meadowview Convention Center in Kingsport, Tennessee. Welcome back to the show, Josh. And uh, you have to be looking forward to this fight. This is uh, another one of those fights that's been out there. Uh, everybody's talked about it, kind of giving their picks, what they think is going to happen. Finally, it's going to happen in Kingsport, Tennessee, in the Tri-Cities. Talk about that fight. Oh, I can't wait. You know, uh, Jay Melangelo, he's a pretty tough guy. We were supposed to fight before my first professional fight, and uh, he backed out, and I had to find a replacement. But he's, he's a real tough guy. I don't know what the situation was back then, but yeah. I can't wait. Well, it's a big step up in competition. You're talking about a guy that can just grind it out. It seems like every win he has, he's a brawler. He grinds out his wins. Um, pretty tough wrestling. How do you feel like your skill set goes against his? Uh, I think uh, I definitely have a little bit more skill. Um, above all, I know I have more heart, um, but you know, then it just goes to who wants it the most and, and who's put the time in to get it. Advanced Sports Lab is always a great experience. You go in, you get your blood drawn, they take care of all the paperwork for you, they send your results to the commission and to the promoter so I can just focus on being a professional fighter and getting on the fight. Advanced Sports Labs. Expedite your blood work today at advancedsportslabs.com. Are you ready, America? Then let's get it on with Fight Now TV. Your front row seat, seven days a week to experience all the hard-hitting action, news, and entertainment from around the fight world. From world-class boxing events. Here we go, the main event. To mixed martial arts showdowns and other combat sports matchups. Here we go. Fight Now TV delivers the hits and more. Fight Now TV also offers unrivaled access to the fighters and insiders who make the fight game happen around the globe. As we go from the training camps to the weigh-ins, press conferences to the matchups, Fight Now TV is there before and after every bell. Fight Now TV also features original series found only on Fight Now. There you have it. Stop on by. It's time, fight fans. Your channel has arrived. All the fights, all the names, all the action. Call your television provider and tell them you want to get it on with Fight Now TV. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Advanced Sports Lab. Well, it's time to close this one out. Once again, go to cagebrawlfights.com and pick up your tickets for Cage Brawl 8 on Friday, January 27th from the Meadowview Convention Center in Kingsport, Tennessee. Well, to close out an episode, we got to have your curtain call, Casey. Take it away. All right. Well, thank you, Cyrus. You know, while I was out in Vegas a couple weeks back, you know, I was studying up and I was trying to see what made the Las Vegas fight scene so successful, man. It seems like a hotbed for MMA fighting. And besides the UFC being on location, what I noticed was is that all of the teams are training together, okay, unified. <clears throat> so you had Team Vaughn, you had Tap Out, you had Extreme Couture, and even the Robert Drysdale guys all cross-training with each other. Of course, when they went to fight, they repped their home team, but what they got was a lot of experience and a lot of training with guys they normally don't get to work out with. With that being said, I think it's a great idea for all the smaller gyms across America to come together in your local regions, get that training together, and then take it to a national level. I think if you do that, we're going to see a lot of growth, and you could even see world champions from the smallest regions in America make it big time. 
A very good point, Casey. And it's time to close this one out. We want to tell you, go to Facebook.com, find us and like us, follow us at MMA ITC. Subscribe to our YouTube page and send any questions or comments to MMA Inside the Cage at gmail.com. I'm Cyrus Feast. I'm Casey Oxendine. We'll see you next week Inside, Inside the, the Cage. cage.